This video is going to implement the uh, reverse string program in Raptor. Right, there's another video that shows you some pseudocode to solve the problem. So I'm going to take that pseudocode. You can see it's very short. And I'm just going to show you uh, how to do it in Raptor. All right, the first thing is uh, displaying a prompt and then inputting a variable. I don't like the variable name str because that is a keyword in some languages, including Python. So a more descriptive variable name uh, for this program is string to reverse. All right, you got to think about what the program really wants. We want to take in a string and then we want to output it in reverse order. The key to solving this is to know that computers treat strings as arrays of characters. That means we can use the variable name like we would use an array name. And we can access individual characters using subscripts or index numbers just like we access elements in arrays. So I can enter a word and I can output just one letter of the word the same way I output an element in an array. Alright, uh, so I recommend, as with all programs, do one little thing at a time, get it to work, and then try to add to it. So this doesn't display it uh, reversed yet, but at least it demonstrates the concept. Another thing I recommend strongly is to try to visualize uh, your data structures. Alright, so the word gravity is being held in memory, in RAM, as a string, but really that is held like an array. And when we have an array, uh, we have subscripts to get to individual locations. And with the word gravity, it's seven characters, and the first index number or subscript in Raptor is a one. So if we wanted to output the last character, we could use the highest subscript number, which for a seven letter word would be the number seven. Testing that, we see it does work. We get a Y from our output. But that's only going to work when our, our string is seven characters long. How can we get it to work no matter what size it is? In the other video about the pseudocode, it said that there's a function in most languages to get the length of a string. So the Raptor help shows us that there is a library function to get the length of a string that's called length of. It's the same as the library function for an array. And that shouldn't be a surprise because computers treat strings as arrays. It's an array of characters. All right, so we can put length of our string variable name, which is also treated like an array, and that is going to return the highest number in the array, the last digit, in our case of a seven letter word, it was a seven. And I'm going to put that into a variable named index, and then I'm just going to change what I'm output to index. What that's going to do for us, we see it still works with gravity, but now by using a variable instead of the number seven, we could put in a string that's only four characters long and it still prints out the last letter. Because length of the string will always give you how many characters are in that string and since Raptor starts with one the last one will always be the same. Now if we want to continue going backwards outputting the characters in this uh, string the next thing we would want to do is get what's at one position less. So we could just copy and paste that same line of code to output string uh, to reverse at index but we just need to decrement index make it one less. And let's make sure this works. It should work with any size, any length of word. And we get the UR. And that's fine for this exercise. If you want to turn it in where it just outputs uh, one character on each line, that's fine. But you should recognize that when you have two lines of code that are exact same, you can use a loop. So we're going to put those two lines inside the loop. We can then delete this other extra one. And the only thing you have to figure out is when you want this loop to stop. And we can look at the pseudocode up here. It was They were using a for loop instead of a while loop. And they're stopping when it got to zero. We want to stop when we get to one. So all you need to do is add a condition that stops when uh, index is, after index is one.